Hey guys, thank you for joining me on this third part of uh, integrating by vi integrating by parts video uh, series. And so now what we've done so far is we've looked at where integrating by parts came from, uh, how it undoes a product rule or how it undoes a product rule, I should say, uh, of uh, derivatives and how uh, you can do uh, definite and indefinite integration. Those were the second and first videos that uh, we did for those. So now we're going to be taking a look at doing integrating by parts, but we're also going to be incorporating U substitution as well. And this is where things really are going to start getting tricky. Uh, I imagine some of you probably haven't had too much trouble following along with what we've been seeing for uh, integrating by parts so far, but this is where things are going to start to get a little tricky. Okay. Now, here, uh, one of the first things I want to be sure that everybody understands, uh, let me get my and set up here the way I want it. Uh, Arctan is one way of writing the function when you're taking, when you want to find the angle of uh, something using tangent. Uh, we also might see it as inverse tangent like that uh, of x dx. So these two expressions are equivalent to each other, uh, just so you're aware. And that's kind of what I'm going to be looking at here. Uh, please, if you hear my dogs uh, growling at each other in the background, please just ignore them. Uh, so in this case, remember the u and the dv part. So this we'll call this u prime, and we'll call this v prime. Uh, the u and the v prime part come from the original function, and that's what we're looking at right now. Uh, so I'm going to call... Uh, the u part, the arctan or inverse tangent of x. So that means uh, v prime, the only thing left over is the dx part. So we have 1 dx. Now this is where things can get, a, one thing that's going to get a little tricky for some of us is what is the derivative of the inverse tangent? This is just something that you need to make sure that you memorize for your uh, for your AP exam, uh, the derivative of inverse tangent is going to be 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. For those of you that are in my class, uh, if you know, in case you're not watching this and you're not, or if you're watching this, and you're not in my class. For those of you that are in my class, that was given to you in your 4.9 section of notes, just in case you're wondering. Okay, so the antiderivative of dx would just be 1x. So now let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what we have here. The function that we started off with, uh, let's go back to the black color here. So we have the, oh, still, let's do black, thank you. Uh, we have the integral. Uh, it's an indefinite integral. We're not evaluating over you know, a, a defined interval uh, would be the inverse tangent of x dx to be equal to u times v minus the integral of u prime times v dx. Okay, that's the, the general equation that we're looking at for uh, integrating by parts. So now we're going to kind of just start doing our substitution. So u times v, we're going to multiply these two things together. So we'll write that as x times the tangent inverse of x minus the integral. And so now we're going to multiply these two bits together, u prime and v. And so that would be 1 over 1 plus x squared times x times dx. Okay. So now let's uh, simplify it just a bit. We'll say x times the inverse tangent of x minus, and here we'll for the integral, if I could write a good integral symbol, uh, we'll just go ahead and put the x in the numerator over 1 plus x squared 
Oops, you can't see that at all, can you? 1 plus x squared times dx. And at this point here, this is where it's important for us to understand that we want to be able to do the integral of what we're looking at here, but we have to do u substitution in this case, okay? Uh, that's the easiest way of taking the integral of the expression that we have right now. So looking at what I have for the integral, uh, x over 1 plus x squared, I'm going to say u is going to be the 1 plus x squared. And so that means I take the derivative of that for du, and that will give me 2x dx, 2x dx. Now, of course, the x times dx doesn't really match what the uh, what I have here, because in the integral I have 1x times dx, and right now I have 2x times dx. So we want to divide by 2 or multiply both sides by 1 half, however you want to think of it. So I'll get 1 half du is equal to x dx. So now what we have in the integral and what I have here match. So we are going to uh, kind of incorporate a one-half constant in front of our integral now. And when we do so, let's go back to the original color. We're going to say x times the inverse tangent of x minus the constant one-half and the integral. And we're using our u notation here, so this is going to be uh, you can think of it as 1 over u times du, or du over u if you prefer it that way. And uh, the reason I'm separating it is because uh, having the fraction 1 over u, it's very easy for people to see what the antiderivative is going to be in that case. And so now let's go ahead and do that. Let's take the antiderivative of the uh, 1 over u expression. So x times tangent inverse of x minus one half. And so now we're going to go ahead and take the uh, antiderivative and the antiderivative of one over u is the natural log, natural log of u. And if you want to, you can go ahead and say plus c because we are not doing uh, definite integration here. So we can, we are definitely going to need our plus C constant uh, there at the end. But we're not quite done yet. We do have to substitute the expression that we have for U back into our problem. We have to take that and put it back into the problem. And so my final expression on this one will be X times the inverse tangent of X minus one half times the natural log, natural, oh, that's not coming out very nicely, one-half times natural log of, what did we have, one plus x squared plus c. And there is our first example using u substitution for uh, integration by parts. So now let's move on and take a look at our next example uh, where we have another uh, transcendental function and see what we're going to get here. So the problem with this example is u substitution is actually going to have to be done twice uh, really in order to try and simplify things as much as possible. Now let me try and work through the problem and hopefully the things will start making a little bit more sense for you. But this is the uh, kind of the note that I, I give in class with this is that here the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with u substitution. U substitution. But uh, 
we're going to use W since U is already being used. Used. There we go. Sorry, my pen isn't the greatest quality for what I'm writing on right now. But anyway, uh, we're going to do substitution, W substitution instead of U substitution. I'm going to say, let's let... Uh, Let's let w equal the square root of the x, because that's really the thing that we're going to be looking for if we had to do any kind of u substitution. That's that's really what we're going to be looking at is that radical exponent. So let's let w equal the square root of x. So if I square both sides, I get w squared is equal to 1x. Now in u substitution, this is where we would start doing our derivative. I would do du d uh, du over dx. So here I'm going to say uh, dw when I take the derivative of both sides, but in this case I'm going to get 2w. And I, let me just clean this up a little bit because my pen's not working super awesome. When we take the derivative of both sides, I'm going to get 2w dw is equal to 1 dx. Now that's going to be kind of how we set up our problem here, okay? Here I have a constant that's being pulled out in front of our integral sign. And so this is going to give me the integral of e to the square root of x dx. That's going to become 2 2 times the integral. All right, let's try writing this one more time. 2 times the integral of w times e to the w dw. And now, this is where we're going to begin integrating by parts. Okay. So we have the uh, expression that we've been working with, the d or the u times v minus the integral. Uh, and so on. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that out. I'm not going to write the original equation, but we're going to just say the u times v uh, minus the integral of u prime v, and we've been saying dx. So let's, this is where we're going to start doing our integrating by parts. So what is u and what's going to be v prime and so on? Well, in this case, we're going to say u will, oh, I have no idea, no idea what happened and that's a little unsettling, but hopefully things will keep working. So here, u is going to be w. And so what we're looking at is I'm just kind of looking I'm looking down here at the expression that we wrote. And so if u is going to be w, then e to the w, dw, has to be v prime. e to the w, uh, dw is v prime. And of course, this is where we've been, what we have been doing with uh, our integration, uh, integrating by parts. I'm going to take the derivative of this, which would be just dw, and I'm going to take the antiderivative of this to get v, which in this case, the antiderivative, antiderivative of e to the w would just be e to the w. Okay, so that's what we're going to be substituting into our expression. Now, of course, one of the things that I forgot when I kind of wrote it down is we have to take into account that 2, okay? 
So that two is going to have to get multiplied to uh, essentially our entire problem, because that's what we have for our uh, that's what the 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 u the integral of the u times v prime would be. Uh, it was wind up being multiplied by two, so we're going to multiply by two here. Okay, and come on, there we go. Give me a nice bracket. So this is where we'd say the u and the v. Well, in this case, u times v is going to give me w, uh, or u times u times v. Let's get it here. These two together. That's going to give me w times e to the w. So w w times e to the w uh, minus the integral integral of u prime times v, so, and again, this is u prime, u prime times v, multiplying these two together will give me e to the w dw, e to the w times dw, okay? And now we work it out as best we can. So we're going to take the integral of the e to the w part, so this is going to be 2 bracket w times e to the w, e to the w, golly, my life for, a, my kingdom for a nice pen that works, e to the w, there we go, uh, and now when we take the antiderivative, the antiderivative of e to the w is just e to the w, okay, and plus our constant. And in this case, uh, if you want to, the, we could kind of stop here, but we do have to go back and do some substitution because what did we originally, we didn't originally start off with W and uh, for our expressions, we had square root of X for W. So we have to go back and originally, uh, for what we had here, go back and do some substitution. So this will be two, times, so w, we can write it as the square root of x, times e to the w, or not e to the w, but e to the square root of x, minus e to the square root of x again, plus c. And we can stop there. If you want to distribute the two, you're more than welcome to, but we'll go ahead and stop there on this example. And uh, I do want to get one more example. I know this video is already getting close to uh, 20 minutes, but uh, well, we'll go ahead and pause this video here. There's one more example that I definitely want to make sure that we take a look at that's going to be a little bit more complicated, but uh, we'll go ahead and stop with this video here. And uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, be well, take care of each other. Talk to you soon.